Welcome to the first lecture of statistical inference. In this lecture, we will learn about random sample. Learning of random sample is very important for statistical inference. So let's see first the definition of population. What's a population? Any collection of individuals or objects or measurements under study is called a population. For example, set of height measurements of students in a class. This is a population. We can measure height for each student and make a set of all those heights. That, that collection is a population. Second example, set of depth measurements of a lake from its surface or a considerable height. This also constitutes a population. For example, here, uh, uh, let's say uh, the bottom surface of the lake is in paraboloid shape. Then, from its surface, all the depth measurements lie in this closed interval 0 to 3. And you can see this set is infinite. It means a population can be infinite. In the previous example, the population is finite. Right? Then next, what is a sample? A sample is any subset of population. But the question is, why do we need to choose a sample from population? The reason is, if the population is very large or infinite in size, we cannot deal with each and every member of the population. So we do sampling. For example, When you cook rice, when you cook rice, how do you check whether rice is cooked? You take out few grains and you decide whether rice is cooked. So you infer the property about the whole rice population from that sample of few grains and make your decision, right? So it's an example of sampling. And by taking a sample, you are deciding about the whole population. Okay, second example. Suppose the government needs to know average income average income per person for some budgetary purpose. So how to get an idea about average income per person. So for this purpose, what we have to do? We have to choose sample from the whole population. Randomly, we uh, select the income of people and then we can get an idea about the average income per person, right? So sampling is very common in daily life. So the whole purpose of statistical inference is sampling from the population and then on the basis of sample information to know the property of interest from the population. So this is the purpose of sampling inference. So before I move to the definition of random sample, let's recall some important definitions related to continuous and discrete random variables. Discrete random variable probability distribution. What does it mean? Probability distribution of a discrete random variable means you know all the values of x and you know the corresponding probabilities. Say p1, p2 and so on. So this is probability distribution of x. And what you call fx? You call fx as probability mass function of x, which gives probability for each value of x. So probability distribution of x provides you all values of x and corresponding values of fx. 
and uh, you also know the property that sum of all fx is 1. Likewise, what is continuous random variable probability distribution? This time you know the whole range of x, say minus infinity to infinity, and a function that provides you probability for each interval of x for any given range of x because in this case probability for a particular value of x is 0. So in a given interval a b probability of x is given by integral a to b fx dx and you know in this case you have a probability curve and total area under this probability curve is 1. That means integral minus infinity to infinity fx dx is 1. And the area from A to B is area from A to B is this probability. Okay. Also, you should recall the definition of mean of x and variance of x in both cases. So, what is the expectation in case of discrete random variable? It is summation x fx. And what is expectation in case of discrete, uh, continuous random variable? Minus infinity to infinity x fx dx. Mean is denoted by mu. Variance variance has this formula ax square minus ax all square that you can calculate using this summation thing and in this case also variance has same formula but this ax square in case of continuous variable how to calculate minus infinity to infinity x square fx dx minus minus infinity to infinity x fx dx whole square. Here also you can write the formula summation x square fx minus summation x fx whole square. So these are distributions of probability distributions of discrete random variable and continuous random variable. Fine. So now let's understand what the random sample is statistically. Suppose we have a population and we are interested in studying a particular property of the population that is possessed by each member of the population. Okay. Let's say M denotes general member of the population and X defines that property of the general member n. X defines that property associated with any member of n. Then x is a random variable. Okay. Also assume that x follows some distribution, say d, with mean mu and variance sigma square. Now let's make a random selection. of n members from the population and also the selection of each member is independent of the other selections. Say the chosen members are M1, M2 and so on, Mn. Suppose X1 defines The property associated with M1, the same property which is defined by X associated with M. X2 
defines the or tells the property associated with M2 and Xn measures the property associated with Mn. Now because these selections are independent, so these are also independent. Further, these are random variables. Why? Why these are random variables? Because prior to selection, I don't know which members these are or which members are coming up from this random selection. So x1 to xn all are random variables. These are independent also. In principle, x1 defines the same property for m1 as x defines for m. Okay? So, in principle, x1 can take any value of x. Likewise, x2 can take any value of x. And also, it follows that each xi will follow the same distribution as of x. So, this collection of n independent random variables, this collection of n independent random variables statistically is a random sample of size n from the distribution of x. Okay. I repeat again, we have a population, okay, and we are interested in some particular property of the population which is possessed by each member of the population. Now suppose that property is defined by the random variable x and also x follows some distribution with mean mu and variance sigma square. After that we make a random selection of n members from the population. Say the members are m1, m2 and so on, mn. Suppose x1 defines the same property for m1 as it is defined by x for m. Likewise, x2 defines that property for m2, xn defines that property for m1. Okay? Now, x1 is a random variable because this member is random. It is coming from random selection. So, so m1 can be any member from the population. That's why x1 can take any value of x. Similarly, x2 can take any value of x and so on, xn can take any value of x. And these will follow the same distribution as of x. Okay? Xi follows same distribution as of x. So this collection of n independent random variables, where each random variable follows the same distribution as of x, defines a random sample of size n from the distribution of x. Hope it is clear now. It will be more clear when we will do an example. Okay. Now the next definition related to the random sample is sample mean. Suppose x1, x2 and so on, xn is a random sample taken from the distribution x taken from the distribution of x with mean mu and variance sigma square over n, sigma square. Then mean of this random sample is defined as summation i varying from 1 to n xi whole divided by n or you can write in full form x1 plus x2 and so on xn x1 plus x2 and so on xn divided by n so this defines mean of the random sample okay let's calculate its expectation or mean of x bar mean of x bar is given by one by n e x one plus e x two 
and so on e x n. Why is it so? By which property? You recall this property of expectation. If a1, a2 and so on, a n are any constants, then expectation of this linear combination is a1 e x1 plus a2 e x2 plus and so on a n e x n. Now what is this e x1? What is e x? Mu? E x is mu. Because x1 follows the same distribution as of x, so E x1 should also be mu. E x2 similarly is mu and so on mu. So finally you get 1 by n into n times mu that is mu. So mean of the random sample is same as the population mean. Not this point. Okay. Likewise, we can calculate variance of x bar. It is given by variance of 1 by n, x1 plus x2 and so on, xn. So by variance property, this can be written as 1 by n square, vx1 plus and so on. Vxn. Which property? Variance of this linear combination of random variables is given by, actually it is given by summation i varying from 1 to n, summation j varying from 1 to n, ai, az, covariance xi, xj. But here, because these x1, x2 are independent random variables, so covariance becomes 0. What is left? Summation i varying from 1 to n, ai square, covariance xi, xi. Covariance of different random variables is 0, and covariance of same random variables, you know, is what? ai square sigma xi square sigma xi square okay so here what is variance of x sigma square so each xi will have the same variance okay so you can replace vx1 by sigma square likewise vxn by sigma square finally you have n times sigma n square divided by n square that gives you sigma square by n so finally what do we see mean of x bar is the same as population mean variance of x bar is not same as population variance it is sigma square over n so finally you can say that this uh, x bar x bar follows a distribution follows a distribution with mean mu and variance sigma square over n follows some distribution remember that it should not be so it may not be the same distribution as i am writing here okay it will follow some distribution that we will discuss later okay so this is the story of sample mean. Now let's see what's next. It is sample variance. Sample variance. Denoted by S square, it is defined as summation i varying from 1 to n, xi minus x1. 
is one whole square, whole divided by one over n minus one. So here also you have the random sample x1 to xn of size n taken from the distribution of x with mean mu and variance sigma square. Okay. So if this is the random sample of size n taken from the distribution of x with mean mu and variance sigma square, then variance of uh, uh, sample mean is defined as s square equal to 1 over n minus 1 summation i varying from 1 to n xi minus x bar whole square. What is x bar here? It is mean of your random sample that we have already defined. Okay. <coughs> Now the next thing is, what is its expectation? Its expectation can be derived just like we did for mean. <coughs> you can see the derivation from the lecture notes. You will find that E s square equal to sigma square means expectation of the sample variance is same as population variance. Likewise, variance of S square is given by 1 over n expectation of x minus mu whole power 4 means expectation of x minus mu power 4 minus n minus 3 n, uh, n minus 3 n minus 3 over n into n minus 1 sigma power 4. This derivation is quite lengthy, so it's better to keep this result for calculations. Okay, you need not to derive it. But derivation of E s square can be done easily. Derivation is given in the lecture notes. Please see there and do it. So finally, uh, what about S square? This is the definition. E s square equal to sigma square means expectation or mean of S square is sigma square and this is the variance of S square. So S square is a random variable that follows a distribution with mean sigma square and variance this. Okay. Let's see some more definitions before we do example of random sample. What is a statistic? Any statistical measure, any statistical measure related to sample, any statistical measure calculated from sample is called a statistic. For example, x bar, s square. This is mean of random sample. This is variance of random sample. So these are statistic. Okay. What is parameter? Parameter is the measure that is related to population. The terminology parameter is used for statistical measures related to population. For example, mean mu variance sigma square. Okay. And also uh, remember that we use small letter notations for the values of the statistic x bar equal to x bar. Likewise, for sample variance value, we will use small s square. Now, let's see an example of random sample from a discrete population. A company manufactures three models of MP3 players. Model A, B, C. Price in dollars is given as 80, 100, 120. Production 
percentages are given by 20%, 30% & 50%. A company manufactures three models of MP3 players A, B, C. These are uh, prices for each model $80, $100 and $120 and these are the output production from the company. Okay? Means the company man manufactures 20% model A, 30% model B and 50% model C MP3 players. Now, first question is, what is the probability distribution of the price of MP3 players? Suppose X denotes price or cost variable of the mp3 players then what's the distribution of x it's clear that x can take three values 80 100 120 and the probabilities for different values of x or you can say the probability function is taking the values 0 0.2 0 0.3 and 0.5 okay x values are 80 100 120 and the corresponding probabilities are 0 0.2 0 0.3 and 0.5 now let's calculate mean of x expectation of x how to calculate it just multiply the values of x with their corresponding probabilities and add so you will get expectation x equal to 106. Likewise, you can calculate variance of x. Variance of x means sigma square. This you will find 244. Okay. It means x follows a distribution. X follows a distribution with mean 106 and variance 244 okay now suppose from this distribution two mp3 players are selected randomly x1 denotes the cost of first mp3 player x2 denotes the cost of second mp3 player so what is distribution of x1 x2 what is distribution of x1 x2 Let's write x1 in the first column, x2 in the second column. So what values x1 and x2 can take? The first mp3 player selected from this population can have any cost because prior to selection we don't know which mp3 player we are selecting. So it can take any value from 80, 100 and 120. So x1 and x2 both can take the values 80, 100 and 120. So what are different possible pairs for x1 and x2? Let's write them. x1 can be 80, x2 can be 80. Then x1 can be 80, x2 100, x3 80, x2 can be 120. Okay. Likewise choose this side 100 this side 80, 100, 120, 100, 100, 100, 120. Then 120, 80, 120, 100 and 120, 120. So these are possible pairs for x and x2. Okay. After that, Let's calculate probability probability for x1 and x2 means joint probability of x1 and x2. So what is the probability for x1 equal to 80? 
x2 equal to 80, 0 0.2. So joint probability, just multiply 0 0.2 with 0 0.2. What do you get? 0 0.2 into 0 0.2 is 0 0.04. Then 0 0.2 into 0 0.3. For 100, it's 0 0.3. So you get 0 0.06. For 80, 120, 0 0.10. 80, 100, 0 0.06 again. 100, 100, point zero 0.09 for 100, 120, point 0.15 for 100, uh, for 120, 80, point 0.10 then 120, 100, it's point 0.15 and then 120, 120.2 point okay so these are probabilities for different pairs x1, x2. Now let's calculate mean value of x1, x2 means x bar values. x bar values means x1 plus x2 divided by 2. So what are those values? 80 plus 80 divided by 2 means 80. Then 80 plus 100 divided by 2, 90. Likewise, you can write other values, 100, 90, 100, then 110, 100 again, 110, and 120. Next, calculate variance. Variance of your sample x1, x2 means S square values. What is the formula for this random sample of size 2? It is it is 1 over n minus 1. It is a sample of size 2. So 1 over n minus 1 that becomes 1 because n is 2 and after that it is x1 minus x bar whole square plus x2 minus x bar whole square. So you have x1, x2 values here. Okay. And x bar values are here. Just solve this sum in each case and write here. What do you get? First case 0, second 200, then 800, 200, 0, 200, then 800, 200 and 0. Okay. Now, you know all possible values of the random variable x bar. So you can write a distribution for it. The distribution of x bar. How to write distribution of x bar? First, you need to write all different values of x bar. Then you need to write corresponding probabilities. So what are different values of x bar? See from this column. These are 80, 90, 100, 110, and 120. So first write these different values. So these are 80, 90, 100, 110, and 120. Then let's write the corresponding probabilities. So how to write the corresponding probabilities? What is the probability for 80? 0 0.04 Because 80 is coming only one time. Okay. What is probability for x bar equal to 90? 90 is coming two times. 90, 90. Probabilities are 0 0.06, 0 0.06. Okay. So add these two. What do you get? 0 0.12. Likewise, you can write probability for 100, 110, and 120. So these are 0 0.29, 0 0.30, 0 0.25. Once you have distribution of x bar, you can write its expectation as well as variance. So what is expectation? Just multiply x bar values with the corresponding probabilities and add. Okay, you know the expectation formula. 
So what do you get from this calculation? You get 106 and you see this is same as here mean of x, the population mean as expected. Variance of x bar you can calculate and you will find it is equal to 122 and 122 is you can verify here sigma square over 2 2 is the sample size so it is exactly sigma square over n here n is 2 right so you can see that sample mean follows a distribution with mean equal to population mean and variance equal to sigma square over n in this case this random sample is of size 2 okay Next, see what is distribution of S square. So here you have all possible values of S square, write them. What are different values of S square? These are 0, 200 and 800. 0, 200 and 800. 0 is coming two times and probabilities are 0 0.04 and 0. Point, no, 0 is coming three times. This, this and this. Probabilities are 0 0.04, 0 0.09 and 0 0.25. So how much? How much it is? 0.38. Is it 0.38? Yes. Probability of S square equal to S square. 0.38. Likewise, you can sum the probabilities corresponding to 200 from here. And uh, you will get 0.42. Corresponding to 800, it is 0 0.20. 0 0.20. Right. Total should be 1. Check it. Yes, it's 1. So this is distribution of S square, the sample variance. Now you can calculate its expectation. That is calculated as 244, which you can see is exactly equal to the population variance, that is 244. And variance also you can calculate that is equal to I've told you the formula for calculating variance of the sample variance earlier. Use that. It is eight five two six four. Okay. So in this example, what we have seen, this is a population distribution where X denotes the price of each MP3 player. So x is the population variable that defines the cost of each population member. Okay. After that from this collection, from this distribution, you have chosen two random mp3 players or you can say that you have chosen a sample of size 2. For first mp3 player you denoted the cost by x1, for second x2. Okay. So these are all possible values of x1, x2. These are their probabilities, then these are sample mean for in each case, then sample variance. From this table, you are able to write distribution of x bar, then distribution of s square. So this is how we study the random sample distribution. Okay. Now let us see an example from a continuous population for random sample. Suppose T denotes service time for a particular facility in a bank. T denotes service time for a particular facility in a bank. And T follows exponential distribution with mean 1 over lambda and variance 1 over lambda square. 
means mu is 1 over lambda, variance is 1 over lambda square. Okay. Exponential distribution means PDF of t is given by lambda times e power minus lambda t for t positive 0 for t less than equal to 0. Okay. Now, let's select a random sample of size 2 from this distribution. In other words, consider service times for two randomly selected customers. So, let's denote those service times by T1 and T2. Okay. Because it is a random uh, sample selected from this, from the distribution of T, so T1 and T2 will follow the same distribution as of T by definition of random sample, right? Means T1 follows exponential distribution with mean 1 over lambda, variance 1 over lambda square. T2 also follows exponential distribution with mean 1 over lambda, variance 1 over lambda square. You, you can uh, write their uh, PDF also. For example, for T1, you can write F T1, T1 lambda times minus e power minus lambda t1 for t1 greater than 0, 0 for t1 less than equal to 0. Similarly, you can write for the random variable t2, pdf, f t2, t2, like that. Okay. Now, what I am interested to calculate, the distribution of this sample mean distribution of this random sample means t bar equal to t1 plus t2 by 2. It is a random variable. I am interested to know its distribution. Now how to calculate the distribution of this? The approach that we will follow is first we will find its CDF because once we know the CDF we can differentiate it and we can get PDF. Okay. So what is CDF of T bar means capital F T bar T. It is probability for T bar less than equal to T. Probabilities of T bar up to T. So how to calculate it? by double integral. What is this by the way? T bar means T bar means T1 plus T2 less than equal to T. Okay? T1 plus T2 less than equal to T. And uh, what is joint density of these two random variables? Because you need to write here joint density. These are independent. So you can simply multiply their PDFs to get joint density. So, what do you get from this? Lambda times e power minus lambda t1. Lambda times e power minus lambda t2. dt1 dt2. Okay. And uh, t bar less than equal to t means t1 plus t2 less than equal to 2t. From here, you can check it. Okay. Also, see that which region it is for T positive, for T positive, because elsewhere it is 0. Which region it is? What is the region of integration? You can check it. It is triangular region. Let's say this axis is T1, this T2. What is this line? This line is T1 plus T2 equal to 2T. Okay. So, if we want to perform that double integral over this triangular region, let's choose a ray parallel to T2 axis, where it enters at 0, where it leaves, it leaves as T2 equal to 2T minus T1. So, I can write that double integral like this. 
जीरो टू टू टी माइनस टी वन एंड वॉट आर टी वन लिमिट्स जीरो टू वॉट इज द राइट मोस्ट पॉइंट हियर जीरो टू टू टी फ्रॉम हियर वॉट डू गेट लेमडा स्क्वायर ई पावर माइनस लेमडा टी वन ई पावर माइनस लेमडा टी टू ऑर्डर शुड बी दीज आर लिमिट्स फॉर टी टू सो यू शुड राइट डी टी टू डी टी वन नाउ सॉल्व दिस डबल इंटीग्रल आफ्टर सॉल्विंग यू कैन गेट ई पावर सॉरी वन माइनस ई पावर माइनस टू लेमडा टी माइनस टू लेमडा टी ई पावर माइनस टू लेमडा टी इफ यू सॉल्व दिस डबल इंटीग्रल you should get this expression okay so this is your cdf for t bar so what is pdf from it f t bar t just integrate this just integrate this to get pdf of t bar what do you get after integration i'm writing that you'll get 4 lambda square t e power minus 2 lambda t for t positive elsewhere it is zero so finally you have obtained pdf of t bar it means now you know the distribution of t bar once you know distribution of t bar you can write its mean and variance so you can calculate mean and variance but you can also identify it as some known distribution in this particular example do you know which distribution it is for this you need to recall gamma distribution okay what's gamma distribution i'm writing here the pdf of gamma distribution is given by 1 over gamma alpha beta power alpha t power alpha minus 1 e power minus t over beta or t positive elsewhere it is zero this is the pdf of gamma distribution okay in this pdf in this pdf if i put alpha equal to 2 and beta equal to 1 over 2 lambda you can check that this becomes pdf of t bar for alpha equal to 2 beta equal to 1 or 2 lambda this becomes pdf of t bar what does it mean t bar is a gamma random variable with alpha equal to 2 beta equal to 1 over 2 lambda okay once it is gamma random variable uh, you can easily write mean and variance otherwise also you could calculate by definition mean and variance but uh, here it's easy to identify that it's a gamma random variable so what is uh, mean in case of gamma random variable mean is what is mean in case of gamma random variable mean is alpha beta and variance is variance is alpha beta square so in this particular example alpha is 2 beta is 1 over 2 lambda so if you substitute those you get 1 over lambda and this you get 1 over 2 lambda square after that you can notice that expectation of the sample mean is 1 over lambda which is same as the population mean as expected likewise variance of t bar means sample mean is 1 over 2 lambda square which is equal to sigma square over 2 you understand which is sigma square over 2 sigma square over 2 means 2 is the sample size we are matching those that result that x bar follows a distribution with mean equal to population mean and variance equal to sigma square over n okay all right so hope you have understood this example well
Thank you for watching this lecture. We will meet in the next lecture.